Hey everyone, this is Major Batman at Link Hero Studios here to show you a new way to use configurable joints to make something hang or appear to hang using physics in Unity. So let me show you what it's going to look like. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the pack I'm going to utilize is the Dungeon Realms Asset Pack by Sinti Studios. It has several scenes and one of them is this really cool one called The Forge. And when you load it up, you immediately see this hanging golem that's torn apart. But it seems a little out of place, and I'll show you um, in the default. Okay, so I got it to load. It took a second. I had to adjust a few things and uh, change my flux settings. So in it, this is the default view. Um, I did adjust the camera to be more centered on this hanging golem. But you can see on the left you have this animation of these buckets moving in the forge. You have some electricity over here, you have moving wheels, some spinning cogs in the back, some smoke and fire and lights, even some from this golem here. But it could use more. That, that initial view I showed you kind of adds a little bit more life element, like this is a real hanging object with weight. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. And I'm going to show you first how to do the head. And the same principles apply, um, but if you want to get to the end, well, I'll be able to show you how they all work together, and um, including a spinning cog here in the middle. Okay, so I'm utilizing a tool called Peak. I strongly recommend this tool. I'm going to include a link down in the description. The same as this dungeon pack. I think they're both uh, pretty awesome tools. Uh, one tool and one asset pack. So. When you click on something, it shows all the different components right here, which allows you to select exactly what you want, as well as over here in the hierarchy view. But one thing that I really like about it is its ability to parent an object by selecting multiple, multiple other game objects. So as much as I love Cinti Studios, their organization skills for their for their scenes do leave a little bit to, uh, leave a bit lacking. So. Um, what we'll do is we're going to take all four of these objects, so it's the head, the lower clasp, the chain, and the upper clasp, and we're going to, as you can see it's spread out a little bit, and we're going to create a parent empty game object. So it creates it down here as, as the head. Alright, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top and then move the chain over and then the bottom class as a child of that so it's going to be parent with the chain as a child and then this bottom class as a child of that i will keep the head as a um as a sibling to this this chain clasp um class chain clasp game object now it could be probably separate if you'd like um, I, I don't think at the end it matters but I like how it's pretty close so that we can do what we need to do okay so to get this started we just we control click on both of the class because we're going to do the same thing on both of them so it saves a little bit of time we're going to disable the mesh collider so the mesh collider allows us so that it interacts with other objects and when we add physics to it, it starts to really make things kind of bonkers so this top class kind of interferes with this um, this crossbeam, and this lower class will, will, is intersecting with the head, which we don't want. So we kind of wanted to add this layer of separation between the chain and the head for the colliding elements. So we disable the mesh collider. The next we're going to do is we're going to add a rigid body to both of them, and then we're going to select is kinematic, and that does it for the two clasps next we'll take we'll select the chain here and we'll keep the mesh collider on it we're going to add a configurable joint to this and we're not going to mess with anything on the rigid body the math is probably okay okay so on the configurable joint we're going to lock the x and y and z motions we can also lock the angular y if you really want to um, I don't really see a purpose of this at the moment, but you can, so that means it's not going to spin around, so that head is not going to turn to face the back of the room. Or you can even set these these limits for the angular, uh, low and high angular limits, so maybe it doesn't like go all the way up and around um, 
this beam. So you can really, you can mess with it and really restrict it some more. But I think for most cases, you just kind of want this subtle, subtle sway, which requires a little bit of weight attached to the end of the configurable joint. So just by locking these. Now the configurable joint has this thing called connected body, which is sort of the anchor of the physics that it's attached to. And so we already did that by creating the class with the rigid body. Okay, so we're going to take this class and move it over to the rigid body. There, the connected body. And you see how it automatically adjusts these. And you can't see it right now, but if you, you might be able to see it. But if you enable your gizmos, this little green and yellow is the anchor point. So what, what that means is that this chain is going to dangle from this point here. And so we can move it down. Right, so maybe if we want at the top of the chain. But remember, this this is the entire mesh, so we probably want it up, up over near the top so that it doesn't like completely poke out. But those are fine-tuning elements, right? We're just trying to get it get it working right away. All right, so we now have this working, and if we open it up, if we press play, yeah, well, let's press play. You're going to have this dangling chain, right? But the head doesn't move with it. And so let's fix that. So the way I think we should do this, and I've tried it a couple other ways, but I think the best way to do this is you take the head, and we're going to add a fixed joint to it. Now this automatically adds a rigid body, and let's up the mass of this head a little bit, so maybe like 35. And then here in the fixed joint it has a connected rigid body, so this is what the head is connected to. Okay, so I was running into a little error and I, I think I figured it out. So let's see. So what we need to do is in this, for the fixed joint on the golem head, what we want to do is we want to put the chain over. The chain is the one that moves, and so that's what that's how it allows it to move as kind of a team element. So if we press play. It sort of hangs and swings, right? And then if we bring in a body like this box and press, it presses both together. And look at that, that's kind of what we want it to do. All right, and then on top of it, if you go back to the golem head, so this is something you could perhaps change by code, is we take the break force and set it to anything but infinity. Well, I think it has to be based upon like gravity and stuff, so 9 times this I think is times the maths, 9.8 times this. If it's anything less than that, then it'll break. But if you just set the break force to zero, perhaps, the head will just drop and fall down. And look at that. That seems to have weight. See, that'd be pretty cool, right? And that's how you get um, just a swinging arm. Okay, so if that's all, you could do the same thing for the other objects. So we'll repeat the same process. I'll walk you through it. The only difference is that for these for these bigger objects, you include more than one fixed joint. So I'm going to go over that. But if you um, if you liked what you saw so far, just give me a like, uh, subscribe. I'd, pre I'd appreciate it. And if you want to know more or have questions, please let me know. Okay, so I'm going to organize these all up, and um, so this will be a little bit of fast forward, and then I'll get started on the next, the arm. Okay, now one thing one thing to note is that this there is actually a cog here on the upper body, so that needs to be brought over to the torso. Let's just bring this up, and 
we'll just we'll make it a child of the golem chest just like that okay so let's get started over here on the left arm or the right arm rather all right so we have the parents so what we're going to do is we're going to take both of the clasps and actually do all four at the same time because it saves a little bit of time. We're going to disable the mesh colliders. We will add a rigid body. We are going to set them to his kinematic. We're going to take both chains. We are going to add a configurable joint. All right, we're going to set both to locked on at the X, Y, and Z's. Then we're going to select this chain and move the clasp over as a rigid body. And then take the second chain and move the second clasp over as a rigid body. So those are now both good. All right, then what we'll do on the golem arm is we will add two fixed joints. All right, just fixed joint one, fixed joint two, and we're going to copy chain one over to the first one, and then the second chain over to the second one. And maybe up the, the weight of this arm, maybe 25. All right, so that one should work. Let's move over to this one. Now this one, there is an issue that we need to address. So this this collider for this chain goes up in the, up here. So what we need to do is we need to decrease the Y a little bit so it is in this portion so it doesn't bug out. So if you run into an issue where it bugs out, the reason is solely because of that. Okay, so let's grab all the clasps, disable the mesh collider, Add the rigid bodies, make them is kinematic, take the two chains, add the configurable joint, lock the X, Y, and Z, then we'll take the mid chain, take the upper rigid body and bring that over, do the same to the, the other chain, and then for the arm we're going to add two fixed joints as well. Now theoretically you could also do this with a configurable joint. A fixed joint is basically just locking X, Y, Z and uh, in both the angular and the motion. So it's pretty much the same. It gives you a little bit extra, but this is for just ease of ease of changing things. So you add those two chains in there and then let's do the torso. Alright. What we can do, now we can do all of them at the same time, why not? So, control click all the chain clasps. Alright, we have all the clasps. Disable the mesh collider. Add the rigid body. Set them to is kinematic. Grab all the chains. Add the configurable joint. Lock the X, Y, and Z. Then go down and just grab the rigid bodies and move them over. So that was the higher parent. Move it over. Move it over. Move it over. Okay. So the last. Okay. Then we go to the chest and we add four fixed joints. Let's up his weight to 50. And more fixed joints. I'm thinking the next tutorial, maybe we do some coding of how to do this by code if you want to, you know, maybe change between two different types of joints. Just an idea. Let me know if you like that idea. Alright, and now we have the four joints here. Okay, so the last thing is this cog. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a configurable joint to it and then we are going to put the golem's chest as a connected rigid body. The thing is if you make this move, it's not going to move with, unless it's connected with something. So even as parenting it, it'll keep it by itself. It's not going to match the parent's rotation. So that's so you want to put this together and then we're going to lock everything except the angular Y motion, which is it spinning this way around. And we're going to set the angular velocity at maybe like 10, and then we'll set this position damper up to the 1. 
Okay, now if we did everything correctly, this will all kind of move once you press play, and that cog will spin as well. Yeah, there we go. So we are getting the cog spinning, we are getting some slight movement, and what was cool about the way that Cindy did it is that these chains end up kind of interacting with each other so they don't kind of keep each other in check so it doesn't get too crazy. It's kind of nice. So it kind of all like swing ever so slightly. And I really think if you were to come into this forge and just kind of see that it's moving would add a lot of weight and feel to it. So I hope you like this tutorial. Please let me know um, what else you'd like to see uh, or what questions you may have and I'd be happy to help. Have a great day.